So I'm now helping prospective home buyers uh, purchase a primary, secondary home investment property or refinance their mortgage to save money. is going on family this is rj bautista your local incredible realtor with exp realty today i have a guest from my on the go lender laura gibbs and today she will give us some good nuggets if you are planning to buy a house even not today or maybe in the future she will give us some advice and tips what you need to do step by step because she's been helping my clients or in fact my past two clients we closed the property with a very 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 smooth transaction. So, Laura, I will let you introduce yourself to our audience or to the first time home buyer or to the buyers out there. Introduce yourself, why did you become lender and how long you've been doing this and all that stuff. Uh, nice to uh, to chat with you. So my name is Laura Gibb. I'm a senior mortgage loan officer. I actually started, believe it or not, in 2002. I used to do finance. I used to do equipment leasing and financing. So I was always really interested in the financial aspects of it. <clears throat> then when the opportunity to help homeowners came along, I thought what better way to parlay my experience into to helping folks. And instead of helping business owners, I'm now helping prospective home buyers uh, purchase a primary, secondary home investment property or refinance their mortgage to save money. So I've, um, <laughs> I hit 21 years in May and um, I'm learning something new every day in this ever, ch ever changing market. <laughs> wow, that's a long time, 21 years. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I, I don't want to say my age, but uh, <laughs> I'm licensed in multiple states, uh, New Hampshire, Maine, Mass, Vermont, Connecticut, North Carolina, and Florida, and probably adding some more states to my my arsenal. So I'm just uh, going through the, the yearly uh, continuing ed to, to get my renewals in, in all those states and possibly adding some more to my tool belt so pretty exciting yeah that's awesome so let's go to the question that i want to ask you because as i've been a real estate agent or real estate professional a lot of people asking me like hey what should i do this in lender side what do i do this does that obviously i have a knowledge of only a basic knowledge but regarding about the financial side mm -hmm. i will let you ask you about this because obviously it's only you who's the lender answer most okay you ready for this absolutely okay i have a uh, three only question so we don't have to make it so long first question what will be the requirements to get a pre qualified for a loan especially for those first-time home buyers what would you say about that sure I try to make the process fairly simple they can uh, call me over the phone I can grab the pertinent information which in a nutshell we, we verify where they've lived and worked in the last two years um, we verify their income and their assets um, you know basically we ask for two years of, of w-2s 30 days of pay stubs sometimes we need two years of tax returns I usually ask for them um, bank statements, etc. However, in the initial step, just to make it super streamlined, I usually don't need the supporting documents right away in order to get them a pre-qualification letter, um, as long as everything's pretty cut and dry. In other words, uh, they're a W-2 employee, meaning they're, they get regular pay stubs. Uh, as long as the information's pretty cut and dry, I can usually issue the letter without needing to have the supporting documents uh, to correspond. I can get those at a later point in time just to make it super easy. Mm, absolutely, because like most people, wants like a smooth transaction they don't want some too many stress <laughs> right right and it can seem daunting a lot of times um say for example rj you say you know please you know this is one of my preferred lenders give her a call she can get you qualified the task itself can seem daunting especially to a first-time home homeowner uh they they don't know exactly what we need they think it's going to be a lengthy process um which is why i try to offer grabbing the info over the phone and a lot of times 10 or 15 minutes later they're like that's it that's all you need so I, again i try to make a streamline or I can e send them a link and they can fill it out at their leisure uh, or they can email me back with the questions. But nine times out of 10, it's usually just a very, very smooth process. Nice. Step. Yeah, because that's most what clients want. They want like, oh, is this going to be a pool of headaches for the, during the process? Right, <laughs> right. So they're kind of reluctant to, because again, it can seem like a daunting task. So a lot of times they kind of put it off or they procrastinate because they're like, oh, I, I guess I have to do that. But then usually when, once the conversation's done, they're like, that's it. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, appreciate for that answer. I have a second question for you. What is the minimum down payment to buy a property for residential and also for, you know, investment property, you know, for those uh, investors out there? Sure. So there are all different types of programs 
is available, uh, generally speaking, first time homeowners usually put between three to 5% down. Um, there are some programs that don't require a down payment like USDA, which is rural housing. The only particular thing about rural housing is it has to be in a rural area. They're very strict with uh, what's called debt to income ratios, meaning what they make divided into um, the, the all any other debts they have plus a new mortgage payment has to be very low. So we, we do have that program available, but just kind of keep in mind that's a bit of a, a strict process. Uh, VA is no money down. So if you're a veteran, you can do a, a no money down loan. Uh, but other than that, ge general rule of thumb, three to 5% first time homeowners. Uh, investment properties are usually um, between 20 to 25% down. Mm, okay, absolutely. Um, that's a good answer and question. I mean, like with stuff that you give it to us, because most of the clients that, you know, I've been helping with, they're all first time home buyers, especially for the two clients that we just closed. They are both first time home buyers. And so far, they were happy about the process. Oh, Thank good. You. I like to, I like to hear that. <laughs> Appreciate that one. Last question. <laughs> it's all good. Since the interest rate now is close to 8% compared to four or five or six last year, is there any way that the buyer could lower down the interest rate without uh, costing them not, not too much money, like to one buy down interest rate? Yes, that's actually a really good question. Um, it's a hot topic now with uh, the, the interest rates uh, on the rise. So they they are able to do what's called like a, a you know, like a, usually like a two one buy down, um, three two one buy down. What that means is that it comes in the form of seller concessions. So if the seller wanted to contribute money instead of it going towards or closing costs, those monies could be set aside to to buy down the interest rate. So maybe um, first year they, they have a lesser interest rate, the next year they have a lesser interest rate. And if there's any uh, overage in that account, say for example, they go to refinance and there's still money left over, then that extra money would be put towards a uh, principal reduction, meaning lowering their overall what they owe on the mortgage. So um, sorry, kind of a convoluted answer to your simple question. There are definitely ways that the, the buyer can do that. And it's generally coming from the seller in the form of seller concessions. So instead of going towards closing costs, they can go towards buying the rate down. Oh, nice. Absolutely. Like for that one. Thank you for answering that question. And also I have like a bonus question, you know, um, for those, the final tips or your final advice for those buyers who's in defense of buying a or renting a property right now, what would be your thoughts? Should they, should they buy it now or should they wait? Maybe later on, they were saying interest rate going down. What would you say about that? One? Your last. Sure. Tip. Absolutely. Uh, that's a really good question. What I get asked uh, quite often, um, I, I usually think that it's better to act now because of a couple different factors. Uh, number one, rate uh, rentals are very expensive. You're not building up any equity in the home. Even rentals in and of themselves are, are hard to find and what you get most people are not satisfied with, with uh, what they're getting for a rental property. Um, secondly, there there's still low inventory. So, um, you know, prices, if, it, if and when rates do come down, the, the home prices might start to go up again. And, um, you know, my philosophy is to, to buy now. You can always refinance down the road uh, if and when rates come down, which we're predicting that they will at some point in time, fingers crossed. Um, but in the interim, you're building up equity. It's your property and now you have something to, to hang your hat on. And so I would definitely say, uh, you know, buy now versus waiting for the rate come down. Yeah, absolutely. I agree on that one because what I say or told my clients, they're asking me like about this question as well, because the price that you are getting today, you're not going to see that next next year especially like if the rates go down price is gonna go skyrocket exactly and the, and the monthly you were paying for the amount let's say for four hundred thousand property right now because the interest rate you can still negotiate on closing costs paying this and that however if the price i mean like if the interest rate go down what will happen we will have more demand so it means like more you know uh, offer out there and then the seller not giving you concession that's price. very true that's a very valid point because you know right now it will when rates do come down then the home prices are going to go up again now there are going to be more people vying for that same yeah. property so more. then then it's you know so right, right now there might be less shoppers right vying for that same property mm -hmm. at a lower amount versus more for at a higher at a higher price yeah and, absolutely you know, I, I truly i truly um understand that uh i have like a quick 
question, last one, I forget about this. What would happen if a client or a buyer change job from W2 to W2? Are they going to be okay with that one as long as they are doing the same stuff in the industry, like while pre- pre-qualifying? That is a great question. And usually, yes, usually they are, as long as it's in the same line of work. Um, so for conventional loans, for conventional mortgages, if they go from one W2 and um, they they maybe they got a, they have a better opportunity, and, but it's within the same line of work. You can tie the two together. It's uh, usually not an issue at all. With FHA or a government loan, they if they move from one job to another one, even if it's W two, but it's a brand new industry, then for FHA or government loan like VA, USDA, FHA, they generally want you on the job for six months. Mm-hmm. But again, that's only if it's a brand new industry. Otherwise, it's fine. One thing I just do want to interject really quick is when people switch from W two to 1099, then that is an issue because usually they want to see at least a year or two uh, under your belt of receiving, say, commission-only income. Mm-hmm. Okay, no problem. How about with 1099 to W-2? Are they going to That's The reversal is no problem. <laughs> So going from a commission only, say, uh, like for me, I'm commission only. If I were to go from commission only to a salary, then that's that's not an issue at all. If I were to go from W-2, meaning I get you know pay stubs, bi-weekly pay stubs, to 1099, where I'm pure commission, that's when it could be an issue because I wouldn't have a track record of receiving commission only income or 1099 income. And usually the underwriter would want to see at least uh, like a year or so under my belt, so. Okay, absolutely. So that's for the video for today. I mean, thank you so much, Laura, for your time you help us a lot and i really appreciate your time you know joining with me here and also would you like to say about your social you know all your stuff out there so for those people who's interested to get pre-qualified or pre-approval maybe they're thinking hey i need laura (laughs) i need to get pre-qualified now so you know feel free to tell your you know any social or how or ways how to contact sure definitely um i would say i mean any of the above i'm on facebook instagram I'm um, trying to get my feet wet in TikTok, but I mean, you can, you know, call me. Probably easiest thing right now is to, just to call or email me or text me. Um, and I, I'm not sure if I should put my contact info in a link, uh, maybe at the bottom of the... Yeah, I will do that one for you. Sure, sure. So, I mean, I'm, I try to be always available. Um, I don't work conventional bankers hours. So a lot of times nights and weekends are when real estate heats up, as you know, RJ. And when you guys are busy, I, I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. So if you need something and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a night or weekend or kind of some random times and that's okay because that's what that's what I do so I'm happy to help and be to even if people just want to get pre-qualified even if they've already they've been working with someone else they just want to see what I have to offer I'm a broker so I have access to several different investors meaning I can do the shopping for them so a lot of times I'm very very competitive and there's no cost or obligation for them to see what I can do for them absolutely that's what I like about that one you know so if you guys looking to buy a property or get pre-approved you know Laura is here I will put her link down here. Promise with you, if you contact her, she will reply you any time of the day. You know, that's why I closed the deal with her, like a couple of deals and everything was go smooth and both of my clients are happy. They were happy. So this is the video for today, guys. Thank you for watching this video. If you watch this video until the end, comment down below, Laura. So you see how many people who want to get pre-qualified and thank you for your time watching this video. See you again next time. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, RJ.